Okay, we're going to tie a pattern called the CDC Bubble Sparkle Pupa. This is a pattern developed by Jim Schollmeyer and introduced to the public in the book co-authored by Jim Schollmeyer and Ted Leeson, the book called Tying Emerges. You start this pattern by uh, Starting your thread about a third of the way down the shank. Trim off that tag end and wrap to the bend. We're going to tie in some Antron yarn which will become the bubble sheath. I'm going to trap this on the side of the shank couple wraps to make it secure pull in that tag end now we're just going to roll this hook down in the vise and then fold this Antron yarn around so that I can trap it on this side Pull it right down on the side and then uh, secure that. Pull in the end and tighten it down and then I'm uh, going to just cut this piece in half so that it'll be two separate pieces, one on each side of the hook and these will be used to form the bubble sheath. And the next step is to attach these two type 1 CDC feathers to the top of the hook. You can see the rounded shape of these. I'm going to tie these onto the top of the hook, sticking out over the bend. And uh, once they're secure and we've done the underbody, we'll fold these two feathers over the top, forming an overbody in the top half of the sheath, if you will. So those two type 1 feathers on there, I'm going to grab some uh, green crystal flash. You can do this certainly with different colors. Green is what the original pattern called for. And I've got a couple of strands here that I've just folded around the thread and wrapped over until I got back to the end point of the fly. And now I'm going to just take the crystal flash and pass it around the thread a few times and come out perpendicular to, or parallel to the hook here and rotate to twist this into a rope that is reinforced with the thread and I'll wrap now a body of uh, crystal flash that will become the underbody uh, I didn't bother to smooth up the whole underbody thread part or I'm not trying to get particularly good tight close wraps here. We're just looking for some flash to be internal to the fly once we form the uh, underbody sheath and the overbody sheath. So with that wrap forward I'll pull my thread out of the core of that crystal flash and tie the crystal flash down. Trim off those tag pieces and we'll start forming the uh, sheath. First thing to do is take advantage of the rotary feature and roll that vise over so that you uh, have the back side of the hook close to you. Then you just pull the Antron yarn forward, fasten it down with a couple wraps, use the rotary feature again to bring uh, the close side back into its normal position. A couple wraps to secure that piece of Antron yarn and you bring your bodkin needle into play and uh, pick these pieces out, loosen them a little bit and spread them so that they do form a sh complete sheath on the body. Loosen them up a little bit so that they ball out from the body material. 
and tie him off. Okay, now just kind of tug on those a little bit to make sure they're up high on the hook shank. And I'll trim them. Well, it looks like I pulled that fire one in a little further and tighter than I meant to when I tugged them to make sure they were up uh, to the halfway point on the hook shank. So I'll see if I can stretch that back out. I, I didn't want it to be that tight. And it looks like I'm going to get away with that. So I'll move on to the next step, which is to... Uh, fold the CDC feathers themselves over the top and because there's our type 1 feathers and in, in the uh, the feather barb lengths aren't long enough to, to uh, be stroked to the front and tied down in front like that you're going to get some fibers like this that stand out away from the back of the shank and can't be captured up front and it's optional uh, as to whether or not you want to leave all of these or trim some of them off but certainly you should leave some so that they form a uh, trailing shuck if you will or leave a bubble trail behind a uh, pupa as the pupa is coming to the top you fold that material forward and trap it right on top of the shank. Kind of spread it down on the side. And with those two feathers pulled forward, if you're satisfied with that, what you want to do is trim out the tips because we're going to fold these fibers back and make the legs out of them. So I trim those two tips off. I'll separate these fibers. Looks like I should have trimmed the feather stems closer. I'll get the rest of the stem out of the way here. There's the other one. Now fold these fibers that are left to the rear and try to keep them on the side of the shank not down uh, not down below like a throat or legs push them right back to the side form a bit of a head right up against them hold those fibers spread out like that Trim any of the ones that are really long. And there we've got the uh, trailing shuck, the bubble sheath, the overbody, the legs pulled down around, around on the side, and uh, the only thing left to do is dub a little bit of a head and tie this off. I'm just using some brown dubbing here. You can use brown or black, whatever the local insect is that you're trying to uh, imitate. Use the whatever color head they have. Of course, use that color dubbing for the head. Once you dub that small head, Go ahead and whip finish this off. I don't glue most of my CDC flies, so I always put two knots in. Trim that off and take a look. 
And there you have it. There's a CDC bubble sparkle pupa tied using rotary fly tying techniques.